It is almost midnight. I'm arriving home from Kansas City. It's getting late. I'm very tired. It's been a long day. And the one thing I can't get out of my head is how much I want to edit this video right away. Starting off with a bit of a confession, this is the third time I've shot this video, so you get the short, lazy version. I went to Worldcon, and I had a lot of fun. I picked up some merchandise, I bought some books, I met some booktubers, and then I came home. But the great thing, and the main reason I had for attending Worldcon was to meet booktubers. So that's what I did. I met booktubers, I met booktubers, and let me tell you something. When we get together, we party. Hard. So hard. I got to meet Chris from Crisper's Book Nook, Rachel from Kalanadi, Chelsea from The Reading Outlaw, Denise Harwood from Denise Harwood, and oh, Brie, stories for the shelf. Oh my gosh, you were unforgettable, Brie. Unforgettable. Obviously, I am in a new location, and that is because we moved. My bookshelf went down in June so that we could sell the house. I was without a shooting location to make videos. Not having a bookish location behind you is, it's really hard to get into the spirit of shooting and of booktube. It's so bizarre. It's safe to say that I lost my way, and now that I have a room again where I can shoot, um, bookish goodness is returning. The area behind me will soon develop into a marvelous reading room. A marvelous reading room of my very own. That, that's it? That's all we're going to play? I really miss the marvelous reading room. Come back, guys! So, what have I been up to? Well, we moved. I got sidetracked uh, listening to Gallivant. Way back in days of old, there is a legend told about a hero known as Gallivant. Gallivant. Blah, 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 Gallivant. I love Gallivant. And I went to Mid-Americon in Kansas City. Mid-Americon 2. The event is also known as Worldcon, and it's where they give away the Hugo Awards every year. It's a giant convention for science fiction fantasy writers and authors and fans to go and to exist in the same space for about four or five days. I had to leave very early in the morning from Calgary to Toronto, but I got to watch the sunrise, which was very nice. Upon arriving in Toronto, I got to board another flight to head straight to Kansas City and Mid-Americon. Once I got through customs, I took one of those fancy Uber vehicles to my Airbnb and decided to take a quick dip in the pool. Now when I got to the convention, I made sure to say hello to the giant inflatable spaceman, perused the sales floor for a variety of books, more about that later. There's also a multitude of author signings at Worldcon. I didn't attend any of my own. I wanted to keep my luggage light so I didn't bring any of the copies that I wanted to get signed. It just would have been too heavy. Panels, panels, panels. There were a ton of panels at Mid-Americon. There were so many, so many panels. The Afrofuturism panel in particular was amazing. It was less about Afrofuturism and more about um, African-American people and minorities and their representation in publishing and how hard it is for them to get published. They've already made the calculation of exactly how many books they're gonna be able to sell. I mean, and that's not just with black books, that's with every book. I didn't get to too many author readings, but the one I did go to was Anne Leckie reading from a book that she is going to have coming out eventually. She is one of the nicest people I've ever met. She just, you want her to be your grandmother or related to you in some way because she gives out candy and pins and love. I, oh, Anne Leckie's pins are amazing. Six of me attended the conclave and all I got was this lousy significance. I had a big nerd out moment when I met A.E. Van Vogt's granddaughter. She was there accepting the award for best novel in the retro Hugos for, 
1941. We saw her on the street. She was looking for a place to park. She asked us some questions and we didn't have any information that was useful. I asked her, you know, are you, are you A.E. Van Vogt's granddaughter? And she said yes. And I had this huge nerd out moment where I, I just gushed about um, her grandfather and his writing and it was a bit weird, but I'm glad I did it. So yes, ribbons, I love ribbons. Team Valor, go Team Valor. Um, first World Con, hooray, and uh, warning may contain nuts. I also found it was important in order to stay energized to stop for a bit, read for a while, take a bit of a nap. So at the end of each day, you go back to the Airbnb, spend some time in the pool, get your pajamas on, fall asleep, wake up, head back to the convention and do it all again for a week. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I picked up some books. There's some books on the sales floor. I'm gonna go through these very quickly because I just, I can't do the full descriptions again. I've done it three times. I just can't. We have Silent Hall by N.S. Dolkart. This is a book about refugees in a fantasy world. And I thought that'd be fascinating to read about because um, I just thought it'd be really cool to have more of a focus on, on refugees and just see what, um, how that works in a fantasy setting. The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, sequel to the Hugo Award winning novel, The Fifth Season. It explores problems with class divisions, racial tensions, and all we using magical uh, abilities to manipulate the earth, lava, mountains, tectonic plates, and geography. I'm looking forward to seeing how this book improves on just the stunning conclusion from, from the fifth season. Where the first book left off was one of those endings that leaves you with a ton of questions and a ton of really juicy stuff that I just need to get into this one really, really soon because mm, there's a fair bit going on. So you just read the fifth season. Hugo award-winning novel, congratulations, N.K. Jemison. There was also a table with free books and here are some of the free books. Again, this will be brief. Some of these books are already out, like Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is basically The Hunger Games on Mars. That's the gist I'm getting from it. At the back it says, post your review online, Goodreads or library thing. Let's just fix that for a second. Breathe by Douglas A. Van Bell. People caught in an airlock or stuck on a base where they're running out of oxygen. Um, basically, uh, five people have to die if anyone else is going to live. I started reading this. I hated it. They were giving these things away like hotcakes at Worldcon. I'm kind of surprised they weren't able to pave the entire road system of Kansas City with these things. That's how many copies there were. Cracked it open, read a few bits about the main characters, and was like, "These. this is not how people behave. No. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. A girl falls down a hole, finds a giant hand, turns out it's a robot, giant robots, and aliens or something. Giant robots somehow. Clash of Eagles by Alan Small, where the Roman legions of Rome meet up with the Native Americans of America. Or, well, actually, it wouldn't be called America, would it? It basically says North America on the back, but there's no Amerigo whatever. Irregular Verbs and Other Stories by Matthew Johnson. This is a short story collection which looks to live more in the horror genre. I thought the cover art was cool, and since it was free, it was like, yeah, I'll check this out. And lastly, Behind the Throne by KB Wagers, a science fiction novel looking to take place in a similar vein as Anne Leckie's Ancillary Justice. Um, basically, it makes lots of callbacks to Star Wars. It's about a space princess who decides to become a space pirate, space lady. Gunrunner. <laughs> there we go. It's on the title. Duty is almost demanding that she abandons her gunrunner role and resume her ruling duties. I don't know the full uh, the thing on it. She's dragged back to her home planet to take her rightful place as the only remaining heir. Yeah, that's the setup. And then I got to attend the Hugo Awards. It was really cool to be there and listening to the acceptance speeches that were given on behalf of N.K. Jemisin, Nedia Korafor, and Neil Gaiman was astounding. Neil says, it meant a lot to see Sandman Overture nominated for a Hugo Award and was disappointing to see that it had been dragged into the unfortunate mess that the pitiable people who call themselves Puppy had attempted to inflict on Worldcon and its awards. I would have withdrawn it from consideration 
but even that seemed like it would have been giving these sad losers too much acknowledgement. Normally, when authors have acceptance speeches that get really political, that's the point where the producers will pull the plug, go to commercial break, and cue the music. But in this case, um, they kept going. They just let the statements be read in their entirety. It made me realize that if anybody on a podium has the right to say something, it's authors because their careers are defined by them speaking and communicating ideas constantly. So to do that at an awards ceremony makes so much sense. The Hugo Awards have always been kind of special for me because it's a way that me and my stepfather have bonded. We both read science fiction and fantasy books and a lot of our conversation revolves around Hugo nominated works. My stepfather collects Hugo nominated books and when I got back from Worldcon, he actually had copies of the Doomsday Book and the Yiddish Policeman's Union waiting for me. It is wonderful to be in a new home in a new place where I can maybe build a better space for this kind of thing. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be making some changes to the channel coming up soon, but I think they're good changes and it's going to make it easier for me to get out stuff on a more consistent basis. Um, some things I've been wanting to do for a long time are finally happening. Ooh, I get to do, I get to do the thing. I haven't done this in forever. Read now, read often, read always. If I were a jolly nothing, what am I supposed to do? I don't have a skill, no niche to fill, no one to come home to. Don't know where to go, don't know how to fit, don't know who to even be. If I were a jolly tailor, juggler, barber, wet nurse, <laughs> cesspool worker. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. <laughs> we're done.